Michael, we are here high above Hollywood. And below us is a site where you've been digging around to see if the Hollywood Fault exists here. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. We've been looking down through soils that are old enough to see if the Hollywood Fault is here. And the reason for that is because there's going to be building happening on this site and you don't want to build residential retail office space on top of an active fault. Yeah, you, you, you certainly don't. And so we're making sure that the site is absolutely safe for that. This is the most extensive investigation ever done even looking for the Hollywood Fault. This is really the first trench done within miles of here even looking for it. this is going to be a development that causes the owner Millennium and us as their consultant to do these fault trenches to one see if there are faults here two are they active meaning that they've broken something that's 11,700 years or younger what kind of job sites do you usually work in it's almost always somebody who wants to be building something so right now, our company is working on a billion dollar bridge in the port of Long Beach. We're working on the west side at a place called Playa Vista, which is condos. Basically, if you're going to build a bridge or a tunnel or a dam or a, a building, that's when people call us. When did you decide to become a geotechnical engineer? I've always been interested in geology. I always wanted to have a profession that was not inside all day. You know, I like getting dirty. I like going in a trench or a hole or watching a bridge being built or a high rise being built. It makes for an interesting profession. So Michael, let's take a trip back in time. Mm -hmm. Before human beings were on the scene, millions of years ago, what was this region like? So the LA Basin tens of millions of years ago was actually a, a shallow inland sea. So if you had been here 30 million or maybe 40 million years ago, you would be standing on the Santa Monica Mountains looking at an ocean, wow. a shallow inland ocean. The interesting thing about LA, of course, is it's constantly changing. Within where we're standing here, there's 60 active faults within 100 miles of here. Okay, it's one of the most geologically complex and active regions in the world. What does that look like, just a fault in general? So imagine if you had a cake, a layer cake, and you cut it in half, and you took one half of the cake and maybe moved it up. The layers don't line up, right? First you would see a, a knife mark in the cake and you would see that the layers are what we say is offset from one side to the other because you need motion in the fracture for it to be a fault. Well, geologists are learned to map and identify things relative to other things they've seen in the area. But the truth is, we don't just trust your eyes. You don't just trust the density and the color of the rock to figure out how old it actually is, right? Yeah, and that's a really interesting point. We take samples, we do analysis, we try to piece the site together. It's all done within a geologic framework, and geologists and engineers have to get in and log it and see exactly what's there. We can do scientific tests, like age dating, then we can demonstrate it's not active. So this trench, for example, we sampled it 10 feet or 15 or 20 and 25, and as you go down, those ages increase. Those materials are denser and harder and darker in color. We have brush fires and then we have sometimes rainy seasons. We all know what that's like. And what happens is there's charcoal left over. It gets washed from the hills down to where we're standing here, what we call these alluvial fans. And in fact, in this trench, there is charcoal. and The charcoal can be sampled and we get pieces of charcoal from thousands of years ago. And so you're going back in time and then showing that with radiocarbon dating. So we have to find how old a certain soil or rock is, usually it's a soil, and see if it's been broken in the last 11,700 years. That's the definition of an active fault. So you're trying to make sure that all of the banding is pretty fluid and continuous. Yeah. If there's a dramatic shift in it, if it's not a natural kind of wavy flow, but a dramatic right. shift, that would be an indication that the ground had broken there. That's exactly right, and, and what we're seeing here certainly in this very small spot, but this trench overall, because we don't see anything broken. We see these layers that are horizontal and they're continuous and they're unbroken. We're very confident because it's a very expensive trench. It's very deep. We have great geologic exposures. We have good dating. We have a what's called a paleo seismicity expert. This is somebody who, his specialty is looking at the age 
of soils particularly related to faulting. The city has been out here, the state has been out on many occasions. We're really confident that there's no active faults here. get smarter. Every earthquake is a science experiment that we get results from and then the codes get updated as we go. The 2013 seismic code is the most conservative. It requires the highest level of seismic design ever. Modern buildings are the safest buildings ever built and when the code changes again and buildings are built in 10 years, they'll be safer than the ones today.